Hey everyone, welcome back. In this video, we're going to rig the eyebrows. In case you like these videos and want to see more like it, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel. In this video, I also want to take you through my thought process when rigging the eyebrows. I want to show you that in most cases, there's more than one solution to rig a component in block. So I want to create two types of setups for the eyebrows. I'll let you decide which one you think is best. Let me know in the comments. First, let's create the global eyebrow control, which will be a simple free control. I will check the is facial attribute, set the control scale to 0.5, and change the control shapes to a light pin. I created a few helpful locators in the scene to make it faster to orient my guides. Great, that will be it for the parent eyebrow control. Just a quick tip, did you know you can operate on specific modules only? Change block's operation mode to module, then you can quickly construct a single module to see results instead of constructing the entire rig. Let's continue by looking at our eyebrow mesh and topology and think about how we want to approach this rig and what issues we can expect or try to avoid. First, I see seven divisions across. I also see that the edges aren't spread ideally, there isn't really a middle edge. In addition, the eyebrows are curved at bind pose, which is quite common, but something we need to keep in mind as it isn't ideal for rigging. I always start with the most basic setup I can think of. In this case, it can be three controls, inner, mid, and outer. These can be skinned and be parented under the parent eyebrow control. Although that seems too basic, and I don't think it will offer enough flexibility. So I'm confident I need more than three, but how many? Looking at the mesh's divisions again, I think a very good option here will be to use five joints, one for every part of the inner brow. Since the curve of the mesh will create problems, creating a control for every section will offer more flexibility. And luckily, there aren't many divisions, so five controls don't feel excessive in this case. To further refine the setup, I think I also want to add a tip control at each end, to give the animator the option to shape the angle of the tip using rotation. Great, I think we have a solid plan here. Let's create it. For the first example, we are only going to use a free control module which you are already familiar with. So I'll speed up the video and briefly explain what I'm doing. I'm going to create the controls, name them, and set their control shapes and scale. The is facial attribute will be automatically checked since I'm creating all controls under the global eyebrow control. I'm using the helper locators I created to quickly position and orient the guides. Once I created the five main modules, I'll create another tip control at each end, parented under the relevant end module. Since I want the tip controls to be animated using rotation, I'll leave them at exactly the same pivot as the end guides. I'll select a triangle shape for the tip controls. And that's it, nice and simple. Let's construct and skin using the new joints. I'll quickly test my setup, then add the new joints into the skin cluster. I will import weights I created between videos, since I don't want this video to be a skinning tutorial. But we will take a look at the weights, as well as talk about a few techniques I use to create them. I'm using NG Skin Tools. In case you're unfamiliar with it, I left a link below. I highly recommend it. I use two layers here. The top one is the blocking layer. In this layer, each edge loop section is flooded to its relevant joint. Since I created a joint for every section, I don't want to smooth the weights in this layer. Also, this layer is masked to the main eyebrow mesh only. I'll use another layer for the area around it. To create a second layer, I duplicated the blocking layer, then relaxed both weights and mask to create the skin falloff. Of course, I manually painted some areas since this mesh is quite tricky. Let's test the setup quickly. 
I think it looks pretty good and I'm fairly happy with the result. We have enough control to shape the eyebrow, as well as rotate and scale the sections to create many shapes. The tip controls also behave nicely and add another layer of flexibility. Now, we could leave it here, but I think there's another problem. When translating the controls, they tend to go into the eye, which isn't great. So it's a great opportunity to introduce you to another feature, the Along Surface feature. Let's deconstruct. This feature is a part of the core module settings and will be present for all modules. The expected input here is a NURB surface. Meshes will work as well, although I don't recommend it. This feature will loop through all main joints for the selected module and create a slave setup for their control authority, which will be guided by the input surface. This is why I recommend using NURB surfaces, as they provide a much stable result when locating a closest point on surface. Let's test this with a surface I already created. If you're wondering, I'm starting off with a NURBS plane, then shaping it using soft selections, nothing fancy. As you can see, I created a surface that will guide the movement. I also made sure it provides a big enough range to animate. Of course, I will use this mesh for both sides. When you create guide surfaces, you don't need to worry about the zero position of the controls since Block will consider the bind offset between them and the surface. Although try to get it close in general and create as smooth as possible surface to prevent twitches when following the surface. I'll make sure I add this guide surface to all main eyebrow modules. I'll also add the end joints as a space into the tip modules since the main control space will be slaved using the surface feature. I can also easily set it to default by right clicking it. Let's construct and compare. And as easy as that and as quickly as that, we have a guided setup. Our controls follow the guided surface instead of being translated freely. In case you need to animate away from the surface, you can use the extra slave controls created automatically. Remember, you can use this feature in any module. Also, remember to skin your surface to make sure it follows the global position of your character. I'm happy with this result, but I think this is a great opportunity to show you another option. Let's go back to a scene before we created this eyebrow setup. Sometimes we need to create an interpolation joint layer to control our components, like in this instance for example. Maybe we do want to leave only three main controls, but we want to create an interpolation chain to deform the mesh better. So how can we do that instead, like we did with the limb or the FK chain modules? Well, we could use the FK chain module by an IK mode, which is a very powerful feature. From version 1.3.1 onwards, FK Chain includes the Do Primary Space Switch attribute. This feature, when on, will create an FK hierarchy using constraints instead of using a direct hierarchy. With that, all primary FK controls will receive a space switch, which is defaulted to its native parent to create the FK behavior. This will allow us to break the FK hierarchy if we need to and set the primary controls to any space we choose, creating the IK behavior. This in turn will give us access to all FK chain layers and features. So this is very relevant here. Let's quickly set this up and compare. I'll choose to create an FK chain this time with three guides and call it Brow FK. I'll add the guide surface to this as well, set the control scale and move to the module settings tab. I will select the do primary space switch first since I want IK behavior. Now I will select Interp Joints and choose 5 to match our divisions. I'll select to isolate the pose rotation to control the pose directly and switch my squash mode to None. I'll choose a dial square for the primary FK controls and switch my primary interpolation to CVs. Now since I have full access, I can also create a secondary control layer. I'll open the IK Secondaries dropdown, Edit, set the number of controls to 5, Choose to isolate poles for this layer as well, and set the control shape to a bubble pin. Let's create the module and quickly place the guides.
Now that the guides are placed, I can see that my interp joints roughly match my topology, which is exactly what I need. I'll quickly add the tip controls as well, below the relevant guides to maintain this ability. Let's construct and import the same skin weights. Remember to change the spaces for the relevant FK controls and save defaults for the module. I now have a primary layer of three controls to shape the eyebrow with nice joint interpolation layer to deform my mesh, as well as a high fidelity secondary layer of five controls to manipulate each section if needed. I also maintain the surface follow feature and the tip controls. Let's see the two setups side by side after some control shape adjustments. Don't forget to comment which one you think is better. I'll include both setups in the workshop library for you to check out yourselves. I hope this video gave you a better idea of the amount of possibilities Block offers, and how easy they are to use. Don't be afraid to creatively experiment with the modules. Also, make sure to let me know if you find any problems, or if there's anything you think is missing. Let's conclude here and move on to rig the nose area. Thanks for watching, I'll see you in the next video.